Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Last episode, we set up our first Terraform project using the Azure DevOps Terraform provider. This time, we're going to take it up a notch and we're going to actually provision some pretty interesting stuff using that provider. But before we get started, I'd just like to thank you guys for watching. Um, please take this opportunity to smash the like button if you are enjoying my channel and enjoy this, this type of content. Um, and also subscribe and ring that bell. Um, it really helps out the channel and, you know, we're really trying to get to a thousand subscribers so I can do some live streaming and, you know, engage with you guys, um, one-on-one -on -one and in person. So, uh, please, please, uh, please subscribe, please smash that bell when you do. So, you know, when my next video drops and, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's drop into the Terraform registry and look at what goodies we have in the Azure DevOps provider. So we see a lot of cool stuff in here. Agent pool, probably use that in the future. Um, we got some brand, we got a bunch of branch policy stuff. We got some build definitions, which looks pretty important. Um, we have environment. We have uh, some groups, looks like some kind of access control settings, some project settings. Uh, we have repository policies. Got a bunch of service endpoint stuff, which I suppose we could use, but I'm more of a fan of using Bash so that my pipelines, even though I am building on Azure DevOps, can be portable to other platforms. We've got my favorite variable group, and we even have work item. Like, we could provision work items. I'm not, not quite sure what the use case would be for provisioning work items uh, using Terraform, but... Um, I'll, if, if you have any ideas, post them in the comments below how you might use Terraform to, to manage work items. I guess if you're starting like a, a project, like it's a very formulaic project from scratch and you want to, and you want to have the same work items in there every single time, um, that, that might make sense. Um, anyways, we're looking for a repository. So I think if I just filter this down by Git, that might get me no pun intended, closer to what I'm looking for. So I do have this Git, Git repository here, and it looks like it just references the project and we've got an initialization type uh, of clean. So let me just drop this in here, into my project, and we'll drop this into main. And I gotta, I gotta update my project. Let me just call this sucker main. And let's update the reference. Of course, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of this. Uh, this this sort of this sort of name of the repository. Um, I suppose we could just call this ter like this this project like uh, infra. So this is the infrastructure that we're going to deploy. <clears throat> we'll call this the infra repo. Okay, perfect. Let's uh, let's run a plan. Okay, so we provisioned that. So now if I go out to Azure DevOps and I go look at my generic project and I go to look at my repos, I do have a repo called, by default called project name. And then I have a repo called infrastructure, which is the one that we're setting up. Now, um, with these with these repositories, it might be nice if I could if I could provision files in here, right? Such that my pipeline file, because one of the main things I do in every every time I set up a repository is I I'm dropping like I'm setting up the folder structure, um, I'm setting up the, I'm copy pasting my pipeline in there, I'm and I'm putting in a boilerplate Terraform project that maybe it just creates a, a random string or maybe it creates a resource group or something like that. Nothing, nothing too fancy, but, um, you know, basically get, gets me, gets me off to the races, right? So let's go look in what our, look, look, let's go look and see what our options are. So with our Git repository, we can have an empty Git repository. Um, we could, we can configure like the branch and things like that, which you would expect. Um, we are, this, this is actually creating a fork of another Git repository, which I don't know if we want to create a fork of another Git repo 
when we're just stamping out, when we're kind of, ha when we have a framework that we want to con consistently deploy, I, I don't know if forking is the right way. Cause then we still have like t ties back to that original repository. Um, and really when we, when we're creating the pipelines and the sample project, we, we really have no intention of merging back into, you know, wherever that came from. So I think what we're looking for is this, create an import from another Git repo. Um, so this is, this is exactly what we're looking for. So we've got this Git repository here. Um, so this is an, an, an empty Git repo, and this is a, a repo that where we're importing. And so we're going to do this initialization block with an it type of import and then a source type of Git, and then the URL of the repo. And this happens to be a GitHub URL. So yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's go back to my code and I'm going to modify my code to add to up to, well, I guess I do have this initialization block, but the init type is clean, which means it's empty. But what I want to have is I want to have an in, init type of import and I want to have a source type and there we go of Git. I think that needs to be capitalized. And then I want to have a source URL of something. And so now this is where um, you can create your own repo template. Um, you just have to publish it out on the public internet somewhere, um, which I happen to have. And you can go, you can go use my Git repo as a template if you want, because the multi-stage pipeline, the single stage pipeline that, that, that I've used on my channel, I've, I've made that available through my GitHub and you guys are more than welcome to use this as your template as well. And on this channel, we'll probably iterate on this te template to improve it over time. And if we find better ways of doing things, um, we'll probably, um, enhance it from there. Um, but let me go out to my GitHub and go grab that repo. So here we go. Here's my GitHub profile. And right off the bat, we have my AZDO Terraform template multi-stage. And this is the repo that I want. So now to get the, to get the URL, if, if you recall from the, re, from this uh, sample, we've got, um, this like dot git at the end. So it looks like there's, this is the owner, Microsoft Terraform provider, Azure, Azure DevOps dot git. So we need to get the, no pun intended, the dot git URL. I think I can just take this, this address and I can punch it in and add a dot get to the end of this. And I, I should be okay. So let's, let's try that out and let's see what happens. So we did replace our infra repo. Uh, let's go check it out in Azure DevOps and see if we now have all that stuff in the starter. And there we go. Yeah. So we have, so this is notice, this is the same project. This is my generic obligatory project name project. And then I have my project name repo. And then I have my infrastructure repo, which is the one I'm actually creating with Terraform. And you can see, I have everything that I need. Um, I have my Terraform with backend shell script, which I, I can't remember what episode that was like from way back in the beginning, a few months ago. Um, where we, we set up a, an Azure DevOps pipeline for Terraform. We have my single stage, uh, Terraform pipeline, all using bash, like no, no funny business, standard naming conventions for backend stand, like the standard arm, uh, Azure arm credentials, and then the backend key name using the application and environment name. Um, and then of course I've got my multi-stage template. So basically this. Um, this import will allow me to use either the multi-stage Terraform pipeline or the single stage pipelines that, that run just a plan and just apply. And actually I might just use the single stage plan for pull request type, you know, build verification process. Um, whereas I'll probably use the multi-stage pipeline for actual deployment. So it's good that I have both of these here. And then let's go look at what I've, I have in my Terraform folder. Uh, and you'll notice I even have my environment, uh, TFR files set up. Now I, I could probably improve this and drop these into a folder called ENV and then it would make it a little bit more organized. But, um, this is using that convention of having the ENV prefix. 
And then you can see all I'm doing is deploying a resource group with my application name, application and environment name. So if my application is, you know, um, an, an iPhone app that I'm building, let's, let's call it NetZen or something like that. And then I'm going to, I'm going to deploy NetZen's dev environment, um, or NetZen's prod environment, then there you go. I like, I, I basically, I'm going to have a resource group for NetZen dev, NetZen prod, NetZen test, whatever, whatever it's going to be. And so in my terraform.tfrs file, this is where I have the things that won't change across environments. The application name is going to stay the same, no matter what environment it is. In this case, it's foo. This could be like NetZen, um, the region that I want to deploy it to, yada, yada. Now, of course, I can, I can modify like what, what variables I want in here. This is just like a template, a starting template that will get you off the door. So if you want to have some crazy multi-region like deployment and you want to have a template for that, go for it. You know, set up your TFR files like and set up, set up another repo that has all that stuff in it. If you want to have a template that automatically has a Packer image that you build and, and, uh, that's in its own folder, you know, under source called Packer, go for it. You know, if you want to have Ansible playbooks, you know, in, in their own folder and have Terraform hooked up with Ansible playbooks, go for it. I'm, I'm actually thinking about <laughs> thinking out loud about future episodes that I might do where I might use this feature, um, and, pro and provide those templates to you guys. Um, so if you have your, your, your favorite idea of like what, what template you'd like to see, let me know. And maybe I'll build it in an upcoming episode, uh, pu publish the video and then publish the, uh, Git repo with the template so you, that you guys can use the same technique to blow out your own environments. Anyways, back, back to what we're looking at here. So bottom line, we have a Terraform code base set up. We have Azure DevOps pipelines using bash set up just with deploying a Terraform, I'm sorry, de deploying an Azure DevOps project and an Azure DevOps repo and using that import functionality. So like all that work is done. What's left? Well, we need to, these, these pipelines have some certain assumptions built into them, right? So I have application name, environment name, um, that are variables that need to be, need to get set. Um, first of all, just having a YAML file doesn't mean you actually have an Azure DevOps pipeline. So I'm going to have to go set up a pipeline. So let's go do that. Um, and, uh, and that, I think that'll be the next step. So join me next time on Azure Terraformer until then, this is the Azure Terraformer signing off.